Hello, welcome to this lesson where we are going to integrate the parse framework into our Xcode project. Now I'm on parse.com and I'm going to open up the documentation so that we can refer to it while we are setting up the project. So let's go to the docs link on the parse homepage. And we're going to download the SDK here under iOS. And we're going to choose this one, SDK. And I'm going to save it on my desktop. But there's actually a quick start. So up here, click Quick Start. Uh, we're going to select Data. We're going to select Mobile, iOS. Uh, and there's no Swift, but I'm going to show you how to integrate it with our Swift project. So just choose Objective-C. And we're going to choose existing project uh, because if you choose new project, it gives you an Xcode project to download, which is Objective-C. So we're going to choose ex existing project. So we've already done this part and download the SDK. Uh, and the next step is that we got to unzip that and then add those framework files to our Xcode project. So let's go to where I downloaded that zip file. I'm going to unzip it. And there are all the frameworks that we have to add to our Xcode project. Now let's create our Xcode project. So I have Xcode open. I'm going to create a brand new Xcode project. It's going to be a single view application. And I'm going to call this the simple chat app. Now for organization, name and identifier, you can just put whatever is relevant to you. Language, make sure that this is Swift though. And devices, iPhone, use core data is unchecked. Click next. And I'm just going to save this on my desktop. Okay, so now we have our basic simple application. I'm gonna go back to that folder, which uh, where I downloaded all of the parse frameworks. Then I'm going to highlight them all and I'm going to drag them right under that root node right there. Uh, make sure that this is checked, copy items if needed. What this will do is actually copy those frameworks from your desktop into the project folder where you saved your project. And that just keeps all of your files together in one neat place. So make sure that this is checked. Click finish. And then you're going to see all of these framework files in your file navigator now. So going back to uh, this documentation, we've done step two. Okay, now let's look at step three. We have to add all of these other dependencies to our project. Okay, so the list of them are right here. And this is why we have this open so we can refer to this list as we add them. Uh, so let me scroll up here. Let me open up Xcode and move it right here so that we can see. Actually, let me shrink the window a bit like that. And hopefully you can see everything. But where you want to go is click this root node of your project so you get to see all of the settings. Uh, and then make sure you're looking at this general tab right here. Scroll all the way down and you should see a section that says linked frameworks and libraries. Uh, and you can already see the parse frameworks that you've added should be listed there. If they're not, you can just highlight these guys in your file navigator and then click and drag them into this section. But they should be there. Now click this little plus icon that you see. It says add items and click plus. And one by one, we need to search for these guys. So let's say audio toolbox, there's the one, double click that and it'll, it's going to add it and click plus again. Uh, let's search for CF network, that's the next one, double click it to add it. And then we're going to repeat this process for all of those. So make sure you get all of them because if you miss one uh, and you try and use a specific feature that relies on that 
dependency, um, it won't work. So I'm at mobile core now, mobile core services. Next is Quartz Core, Security Framework. Now, if you're not using all of the features of the Parse platform, you probably don't need all of these frameworks either. Um, but for this demonstration, I'm going to add all of that rather than figure out which ones I need and don't need just for the data part. Okay, down to the last two. So there's a couple here. Make sure you're selecting the right one according to that documentation. And libsql light. Again, there are two of them that are very similar. And according to the documentation, I should select this one without the 3.0. I should select this one. Okay. Now, that we've done that step, let's go back into our Xcode project and clean it up a little bit. What you can do is highlight all of these frameworks, right click it, or hold down command and click if you don't have a two button mouse, uh, and then select new group from selection and name it frameworks. So that just tucks them away into a group nicely. Now, if you elect to create a group and then drag them into the group instead of doing that, then just go back to your project settings and make sure that none of these frameworks and libraries are red because if they're red, that means it can't find it. You just, uh, you just moved them. And then all you would need to do is just delete the red entry and then redrag it from where your new location is in your project uh, into that section. Okay, now let's do a simple check. So let's go prod, uh, product and select build just to make sure everything's working and building and compiling. Okay, succeeded. Uh, chances are if you have some red entries in here, uh, then you wouldn't have been able to succeed in building it. Okay, so let's go back to the documentation and let's see what we have to do. So now we have to connect our app to parse. Uh, let's see what we've got here. We have uh, the app delegate. Actually, before we do this, so this here is Objective-C code and we're working with a Swift project. So um, if we want to use Objective-C code in our Swift project, we need to create what's called a bridging header. Uh, and the frameworks, these parse frameworks are Objective-C, so we're gonna have to do that. And all you need to do is right click your project folder here, uh, go new file, so we're gonna add an Objective-C file. Uh, I'm just going to go to iOS source, make sure you're up here, choose Objective-C file, and you can call it your app name and just save it in your project folder and it's going to ask you would you like to configure an Objective-C bridging header because it recognizes that you're using a Swift project right now but you're adding an Objective-C file so select yes and what it's going to create for you is this bridging header dot h right here we're going to delete the .m because we don't need that. And all we need is actually this bridging header. So in this bridging header, we're going to write Objective-C code to import the parse files into, uh, see right here, it says use this file to import your target's public headers that you would like to expose to Swift because we're going to be using the parse classes inside our Swift files and those parse classes are written in Objective-C. In here, we're going to write hash or pound import. And do that to import the parse headers from the parse framework. So this specifies the parse framework and this is the header file for the parse classes. Uh, and if you look here, 
in the documentation, this is what you would have to do normally in an Objective-C project. And you would have to do this in every single class where you want to use the parse classes in. Uh, but for Swift, we have this bridging header, which we write this import statement once, and it's going to be uh, imported into all of our Swift classes that we want to use. So let's go to appdelegate.swift now and look at this did finish launching with options. Uh, make some space here before the return statement. And this is where we are going to do this code. So like I said, this is Objective-C code, but we're going to translate it to Swift. So this line we don't really need to worry about. It's optional. It's just enabling the local data store. This one, again, is optional. What we're interested in is this line here, where we specify our app ID and our client key. So we need to find out what those are. Uh, in the previous video, we created a parse app instance. So go ahead and log into parse now. Uh, if you don't have an account, just create an account. So what you're going to see is a dashboard here. Uh, this chat app is the one we created in the previous lesson. So uh, if you don't have that, just click create new app and then just give it a name and you'll have this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hover over this little gear icon here and click keys. Okay, and here are all my keys. It doesn't matter if you see them, although you should keep your own keys private, but because this is just a public demonstration, uh, feel free to use my keys. <laughs> so copy the application ID, go back to Xcode. Ah, okay, so we gotta go parse dot, see, if we didn't do this bridging header and you don't get this autocomplete, then just double check that you have the bridging header and inside that you have that import statement correctly. Uh, we're going to choose this method set application ID uh, and it accepts a string. There's my application ID. Let's go back here, copy the client key and for the client key, let's pass that in as well. So that's all we need to do here. Let's go back to the documentation. Okay, and it also recommends to compile and run it just to make sure nothing's broken. And we're going to go back. You can do command B to build it. So while that's building, let's take a look at the next line. Um, okay, so we don't need to do that because of our bridging header. And this code right here, what it does is create a new parse object. Um, it gives it a record name and then it gives it a specifies a column sets a value and then saves it to the database so the cool thing with parse is that if you create an object of a specified class and you specify a column that doesn't exist then and you save it then it's actually going to create that record type and it's going to create that uh, entry so in you know, back in our chat app parse instance, if I go into core up here and take a look at our data, right now we have no classes and we have no data. So I can either, you know, add a new class here, uh, but I don't even need to do that. So I can add a new class here. I can, you know, specify all of the uh, properties that that class would have. Or I could just go to view controller under the view did load, I can say let um, test object be of type PF object equals PF object. We're going to create a new PF object uh, with a class name. Let's say test class. And I'm going to say test object some property equals uh, some value. And then I'm going to say test object dot save. We're going to call the save in background with block method on that object. 
And here you can pass in a block. Basically, it's going to be a chunk of code to execute as soon as it's successfully saved. We're going to put nil in here because we don't want to do anything uh, after it's saved. But you could, and you will, we probably will uh, when we start implementing our chat app. But the purpose of these three lines is just to test that we've set everything up correctly. Because after running these three lines, if our application ID is correct, if our client key is correct, if you know everything is set up properly, then we will see this entry in our parse admin dashboard. So let's hit command R and run this app right now in the simulator. And let's see if we get our new class with this sample property and sample value. There it goes. Okay, so we don't see anything because these three lines don't display anything on the screen. By default, our uh, single view application is just a blank view. Okay, now we go back here. Let's refresh this page. Sure enough, under data, you can see now we have one class which has one record or one row and it has, see, this property and this value here. So this confirms that we've set up parse correctly with our Xcode project. In subsequent lessons, we're going to uh, create our class here, and then we're going to start setting up the user interface for our simple chat app. If you guys want to download the source code, as in my particular Xcode project, I'm going to make that available in the link below the YouTube video uh, and you can download it. But I'm going to erase the application ID and the client key from my project so that you're going to have to set up your own parse app instance and put in your own keys. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.